Hello 3D Printing Friends, today on the BB3D channel we're going to take a look at an unusual tool that may or may not have a place in your 3D printing toolkit. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about cool 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so let's say your prints aren't coming out as you expect. You're using the same brand of filament your friend uses, and you're using the same print settings your friend uses, and heck, maybe even the same model of printer, but despite everything being the same, your results are just not as good as what your friend gets. Is it your filament? Is it your settings? Is it your printer? When you're troubleshooting your prints or your 3D printer, you might wonder if your printer's nozzle is actually getting up to the correct temperature. Same goes for the bed. So how can you tell if your nozzle is really getting up to 230 degrees C or the bed is really getting to 60 degrees C? For that, you need some kind of a temperature measuring device, such as a thermometer. But not just any thermometer. Heck, maybe not even this one, but we'll talk about why in a minute. So what is this fine piece of equipment that I'm holding? This is the USAP 2732 non-contact infrared thermometer from AO Putt River on Amazon. It retails for about $60 US, but they gave me a pretty good discount on it, so I figured I'd give it a shot. Now let's talk a little bit about the thermometer's features and why I thought it might be useful to have in my toolkit. Here are the bullet points. It has a ridiculously huge temperature range. It can measure from negative 50 degrees C all the way up to 1500 degrees C. That's negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit to 2732 degrees Fahrenheit, which I just literally realized explains that particular sequence of digits in the model number. This is a far greater range than I will ever need to measure, but it's nice to know that if a volcano erupts next door, I can get a pretty good reading on the temperature of the lava. It has a dual laser system. Most infrared thermometers only have a single laser dot, but this one has two, and they converge to show you the best measuring distance. It has a nice backlit LCD. It has a flashlight feature, a pair of white LEDs to illuminate the area when you're taking a measurement in a dark space. Now, you may have already guessed that a non-contact infrared thermometer measures infrared radiation. Infrared basically means less than red because that's just below the red light in the visible spectrum. So infrared light is light that we can't see, but we can feel it as heat. One thing we know about light is that it can be reflected by shiny surfaces. So if you have a glass bed on your printer or a shiny spring steel flex plate, the temperature readings that you get by pointing an infrared thermometer at the bed and pulling the trigger are probably going to be the temperature of whatever is being reflected in those surfaces, at least to a degree. What am I talking about? Well, think about a mirror. When you look at a mirror, you're not seeing the mirror, you're seeing what's reflected in the mirror. In the same way, a non-contact infrared thermometer is seeing the temperature of what's reflected by a shiny surface rather than the temperature of the surface itself. So let's talk about measuring bed temperature first because that's going to be easier than measuring the hot end. To get an accurate reading, you need to take a measurement from a non-reflective surface. Got build tack or something like it on the bed? You're good. Those of you with removable flex plates that have dark magnets under them, just remove your flex plate and take a reading of the magnet surface. Those of you who print on glass or mirrors or some other shiny non-removable print surface, just put down some painter's tape or masking tape on the bed in say a four inch by four inch square. That way you've got a non-reflective surface that you can get a reading from. So with the bed up to temperature and a non-reflective surface on it, just point the thermometer at the bed and pull the trigger. Like most other infrared thermometers, this one will continuously update the LCD to show the temperature of the surface that it's pointed at for as long as the trigger is pressed. One cool feature of this thermometer is that in addition to the current reading, you can set it to also show you the minimum, maximum, or average temperature that it has seen during a sampling session. I like to have it set to show the maximum temperature. Now, any non-contact infrared thermometer is going to be able to do a good job at measuring the temperature of the heated bed, whether it's a cheap $20 one or the $60 one. Originally, I got this unit because I wanted to try to verify the temperature of the heated bed and the nozzle of my 3D printers. And while it's amazingly accurate at reading the temperature of the bed, it is very, very difficult to get a reading on the heater block at the nozzle. Why? Well, the heater block is usually shiny polished metal. It may have an insulator around it, such as ceramic wool and Kapton tape, or it may have a silicone sock. You can't get an accurate reading through the insulator, so you need to remove it, which means pulling the sock off the hot end. 
So you remember that mirror analogy earlier about how shiny reflective surfaces, such as the polished metal of a heater block, are hard to get a reading on? While you can put tape on the heated bed if you have a reflective surface, you can't put tape on the heater block. That just leads to bad smells and the possibility of a fire. A nozzle at 230 degrees C is about the same as Fahrenheit 451. Not only a sci-fi classic, but also the flashpoint of paper, so that's definitely not a good idea. One cool feature of this thermometer is that it can compensate for that tendency of shiny metals to not give us a good reading. This is its emissivity adjustment, and there is a table in the instruction manual that shows emissivity values for various surfaces. This unit defaults to an emissivity value of 0.95, which is within the range of most of the surfaces listed in the table. One oddball value in the list is stainless steel with an emissivity of 0.2 to 0.3, and that was the only metal on the list that seemed close to these shiny heater blocks, so I adjusted the emissivity to 0.3. And I pointed the thermometer at the heater block, and I got the two laser dots to line up on it, and I got temperature readings all over the scale. Now, this thermometer has a threaded hole in the base, so I mounted it on a tripod to try to stabilize it as much as possible, and I found that if I pointed it at just the right spot, and the moon was in the proper phase, and Thermes, the god of temperature measurement, was smiling down upon me, I could get a reading that was close to what I had set on the printer. See, not only is it very difficult to get a measurement of a shiny surface, even with the ability to compensate for that surface's emissivity, it is further complicated when the thing that you're trying to measure is very, very small. The bed has a large surface area, making it easy to get a measurement on, but the heater block presents a surface area of less than a square inch, and that tiny surface area is just too small to get a repeatable, accurate reading. Now, I don't see it as a flaw in the thermometer's design. I simply chose the wrong tool for the job. Now, I've seen Chuck Hellebuck perform temperature measurements of hot ends on his videos on his Filament Friday channel, and he inserts a thermocouple down into the hot end right about where the heater cartridge is, so he can get a super accurate reading. I was hoping to find a quick, easy way to take a reading without doing all that, but sometimes there just isn't a quicker, easier way. Sometimes there are no shortcuts. Sometimes. You have to use the right tool for the job, and in this instance, that means doing it Chuck's way. So now I have a really nifty infrared thermometer, but I can't use it for what I wanted to. Now that isn't the first time I've made a bad decision, and it won't be the last time, but I did learn that trying to measure the temperature of a heater block with an infrared thermometer is such a challenging, exacting thing that it really probably is easier to just do the thermocouple thing. Now, if I'm wrong about this, and it wouldn't be the first time for that either, and you have been able to use an infrared thermometer to get an accurate, repeatable measurement of the temperature of a heater block, please comment and let me know how you did it. And if, by some twist of fate, you would like to own one of these, there is a link in the description. Well, thanks for making it all the way to the end, and thanks to everybody who likes, comments on, and shares these videos. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss out on any cool 3D printing videos. If you like this episode, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down, but either way, please share your thoughts in the comments. If you like the content I'm producing and want to help out, consider supporting the channel with a one-time micropayment. You could buy me a coffee or leave a little something in the PayPal tip jar, and there are links for those in the description. And another way to help out is to use the affiliate links in the description when you're shopping online. Doesn't cost you anything extra, but a tiny portion of any purchase that you make goes to the channel and helps cover the cost of making these cool videos for you. Well, I think I'm going to go put this thermometer back in the toolkit. Then I'm going to go print something cool. You do the same, and I'll see you next time.